Today, Pastor George is back again, the second half of the message that I hope you took time to listen to earlier. And we're talking about John the Baptist, and, and the question is this, what qualifies a man to be sent from God? And it's based on John 1 and 6, there came a man who was sent from God, and his name was John. And, and in the message that you heard earlier, we discovered that John the Baptist was a miracle baby, born to Zechariah and Elizabeth. And they prayed, and, and God answered their prayer. And in old age, they gave birth to this beautiful man of God. And it actually means graced by God, or Jehovah is gracious. And so we try to answer the question, what qualifies a man or a woman to be sent from God? We've already established that John the Baptist was a spirit-filled Christian. Number two, we discovered that John was set apart for God. He was separated from the world and separated onto God. And, and we use the word holy or holiness, and, and it comes from the Greek word hagios, and it means to be set apart from the world, from stuff, and to be separated onto God. And so here is John the Baptist. Today, we're going to discover that John witnessed the light. He was a witness to Jesus Christ. John, for instance, said with reference to Jesus, John said, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. And on one occasion, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And John qualifies himself, if I might put it that way, by being a witness to Christ himself. It's not something that somebody told John about. It's, it's not something he picked up on social media. It's not something that he read in some deep theological book. But John had witnessed for himself that Jesus is the light of the world. And John could go about his business and say, I've been there. I've met him. I know him. He is real. He's alive. He's the light of the world. And with reference to John the Baptist, John the author who wrote about him said, he said of John the Baptist, just listen, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, Jesus, so that through him all men might believe. You see, you witness to what you know. You witness to what you experience. You, you witness to what you have gone through in the experiences of life. Once I had witnessed an automobile accident, my wife and I, and it was a horrible sight. And when the police and the paramedics got to the site, they interviewed me and they took a statement. And months after that, I got a call to appear in court as a witness to the accident. And they didn't ask me what I thought might have happened. They asked, what did you see? What did you experience? What was the event? And my questions were short and to the point because I was a witness to a terrible accident and all the court wanted was the truth. And so John is going to witness to the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. 
there was a man born blind and Jesus healed him. And there was a lot of fuss and a lot of questions. And the blind man was asked about this healing. And here's what he said of Jesus. He said, whether Jesus is a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. He was a witness to the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure that blind man didn't go through the history of Jesus or his parents or the fact that he was a carpenter. All he knew is that Jesus, out of love, touched him. And this blind man was witness to that. When the light came, when Jesus came, John bore witness to that. In fact, he was so bold in his being a witness that in John 1 and 29, Jesus said, or John said of Jesus, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. So it's not just knowing him as the light of the world and the one who could bring life into individual people, but he's the Lamb of God. And he came to heal us, to cleanse us, to take away our sin. So John is a witness to the light. John was also... And this helped qualify him to be sent from God. He was a man with a mission. John's mission was declared to declare Jesus Christ. The Bible says of John the Baptist, it says, He himself was not that light. He came only as a witness to that light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. And John's mission was about the kingdom of God. In Matthew 3 and 1, John said, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he, Jesus, amen, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John's mission was to present Jesus John's message and mission was to present the gospel. While the church is looking for better methods, God is looking for better men slash women. God doesn't look for a program without a mission. God looks for men and women, people who will hear his voice, respond to his call, and will do his will. With a mission ever before him, John deliberately set out to preach the word because of the mission and, and to be a part of the spiritual answer to the spiritual problems of the world. We have to be spiritually called and spiritually equipped so that the mission of pointing to Jesus can be true. He is the light, and our mission should not be about ourselves. Our mission is about the fixation of Jesus. Fix your eyes upon Jesus, the Bible tells us in Hebrews. Well, there was another qualification of John that you and I can emulate today. John was a man of humility, self-abased. He wasn't a guy who saluted the congregations or the people and says, I'm a good man. I'm a powerful man. I'm a special man. No, that was not how John ministered to people. And though John was filled with the Holy Spirit from birth, and he lived an exemplary life in the eyes of Jesus. Humility was a distinctive mark of his character. Some of the greatest men of God 
were used effectively by God because of their sense of humility. It says in Mark 1 and 7 from the New Living Translation of John, he is someone who is coming soon, or he said of Jesus, he said, someone is coming soon. I, I need you to get this straight. John said of Jesus, someone is coming soon who is far greater than I am. Yeah, I'm John the Baptist, and I bring a message, and I'm on a mission, but the one who's coming is greater than I am. So much greater, John says, that I'm not even worthy to be his slave. That's a sign of humility. That's a sign of being the kind of a person and a reflective character that God would have us all to be today. You and I can't do it on our own attributes, our own intelligence. You and I can only do it when the Holy Spirit of God humbles us as a servant and as a slave. It was said of Moses in, in, in Exodus, he said when he was called to go to Pharaoh, uh, by God. And here's what Moses said. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He wasn't jumping for joy. He said, thank you, God, for choosing me. Thank you, God, for all of the people that's around. You chose me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I must be an awesome person. No, he asked the question, who am I? Who am I? And God equipped him to go in a sense of humility. Gideon, another great man of God. And there could be Susans out there today. There could be Georges out there today. There could be Jordans out there. There could be Sheilas. There could be Beulas. There could be other people out there today who say, God, I want you to use me. But first I need to be humbled. But Lord, are you saying, as Gideon asked the question, but Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. This is Gideon, who became one of the greatest strategists in the known history of the Old Testament. Who am I? He became a great military leader. My clan is the weakest. And yet God had recognized the humility of this man and used him enormously in the history of Israel. David. This great man of God said, who am I? And what is my family or my father's clan in Israel that I should become the king's son-in-law? You know what? If we're going to do mission, if we're going to do the message, if we're going to do the kingdom stuff of God, we must come with hearts of humility. Why, even it was said of King Solomon, but I'm only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Imagine King Solomon. And again, God was able to use him in a most powerful way. You see, John the Baptist counted the cost. There was no guarantee that when he was birthed to his parents in old age, that John would live a secluded, protected life as long as he was presenting the gospel. John would face temptations and problems and misunderstandings. John would be imprisoned because he took a moral stand on an issue that other people were fearful of. And while he was in prison, unfortunately, John was beheaded. John counted the cost of being a man that God could use in his age. John was honored by Jesus himself. Jesus said, among those born of women, there was not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. And so for, for Jesus 
to, to shout the accolades in that way of John the Baptist means that John had it right. He was working as a man of God, and God sent him because of those qualifications. Do you want to be used of God today in your church, at your place of employment, at your family table? Do you want God to allow his light to shine through you? Then look at the credentials of John the Baptist and simply humble yourselves before the Lord and say within your spirit, God, use me for your glory. The Lord bless you. Let me just pray. Father, today, as the message has been simple, as the message has been heard by many, let it instill hope in the hearts of the people. In Christ's name we pray it. Amen and amen. Blessings.